I'm Borisov Mitkov, as Tanya said. Uh, I'm a concept artist, some sort. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I've worked uh, well, a lot of years in the Ubisoft, uh, working on some interesting projects, uh, some of your favorite uh, Assassin's Creed. Uh, I work mostly in the Coral Painter. Uh, it's an amazing software. I started painting in it from probably 2003, and uh, I'm using it since then. So, uh, I'm not much of a talker, so i am start showing you some of my stuff, explaining the process, uh, the tools I'm using. Uh, so, if you have any questions, just, uh, you know, uh, ask Tanya or directly to me, so I can answer it right away. About the concept art, uh, where do I start? When creating a character, uh, the technique I use mostly is uh, very traditional. Uh, work with lines or uh, custom brushes, it all depends on my mood, actually. So, I'm trying to um, find a balance in between the traditional technique and the digital one with a Coral Painter. Uh, that's, a, that's why I love this uh, software. So, usually, when I approach creating a character for a game, uh, I start with the thumbnails. I, want, I, I do a lot of thumbnails, uh, just the rough sketches. Uh, it, uh, I'm trying to explore the pose, the posture of the character, um, his uh, face, uh, you know, trying to uh, imagine his background a little bit. So I'm going to show you some of my older works. Uh, these are from uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Rogue, exploring character body types. These are old. I don't like them anymore, but <laughs> they work too. I explain my process. So, in every game we have uh, different uh, body types to uh, give the player, uh, to explain him how um, different characters work in the game. I mean, uh, especially in Assassin's Creed, if some of you have played the game, uh, there are like uh, super fast characters, those that are slow but heavy armored, uh, some of them are uh, fast and at the same time very deadly. So they have uh, different body types. Uh, uh, this is how I usually approach when I start working on uh, different enemies or uh, NPCs, uh, doing some thumbnails. Show you some other. Borisov, we have yes. a question from Jamal, and he's wondering if there's any chance of you making Gumroad tutorials. Yes, of course. Actually, I was asked uh, many times, but uh, I haven't had time to do it, actually, properly. So, maybe uh, after this webinar, if uh, there are really people asking for it and uh, they want to see a tutorial, I can do that, definitely. Okay, great. Thank you. He says, excellent. <laughs> <Thumbs up. laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I would love to do that. Uh, so, these are the characters that uh, I were already uh, using, the previous body types I showed. There they are. Uh, once they're approved by your art director or your client, you can proceed with uh, coloring and rendering well, until you reach uh, what you're aiming for. So, these are the characters that, characters that actually enter uh, modeling phase, rigging, and entering the game. So, we have uh, the first one is Agile. He's less armored. As you see, uh, he doesn't have any armor. He has uh, just knives and so on. But he's fast. He can get you. So, uh, the second one, uh, more weapons and so on. Uh, he's also fast, but not as fast as the Agile, 
but he can shoot from uh, long range and uh, he's uh, well prepared for uh, close combat. Uh, the last two, this one is the heavy, uh, heavy one. He's slow, but if he gets you, catch you in, a, you know, in a close combat, he'll beat you definitely. <laughs> he's really a tough, tough enemy, and so on. So, this is on. Uh, I so have yes, another just, question uh, for you. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I apologize if I don't say the name right, but Abidan, <laughs> I'm really bad. That's so um, he says, and I, it could be she, I apologize again, but it appears that your work is heavily inspired by historical costumes, and they're wondering mm -hmm. where do you find good reference for these? Oh, okay. Uh, internet is your best friend, buddy. So I have a folder usually I use for references. Uh, let me show now. In this version of uh, Coral Painter 2016, there is a great addition. It's called Reference Image. You can see it right here. I usually uh, I'm using it uh, all the time. So you can uh, load all your reference images you're using at the moment. You can load them one by one, or just uh, make a big sheet uh, with uh, different images and just uh, use it as a reference window. And also, as uh, uh, you can pick the colors from it and use it in your paintings. The, um, so, on your question uh, about the uh, references, uh, Pinterest is an amazing website. Just search for anything and you'll find it there. Let me show you some of examples I got from throughout the years. So, there it is. Some of my favorite medieval. I get them from different websites, uh, from, uh, let's say, from Facebook, uh, Pinterest, Google search, you can find also. There's a lot of people doing uh, all different uh, cosplay and so on, so you can just, uh, if you like it, just save it. Uh, you use it at some point, I guarantee you that. But uh, yeah, Pinterest is Amazing website. You can start from there. I was just on there this morning looking for inspiration. <laughs> oh, it's a lot of inspiration out there. Yeah. <laughs> Especially with Pinterest writers. Mm -hmm. So, uh, let me get back to... Just a second. I got a bit lost. There we are. We threw you so, off track. I'll try to explain one of my techniques I usually use uh, for sketching and painting. Uh, it's very simple, well, for me at least. Uh, there is an amazing brush in uh, Coral Painter called uh, Palette Knife. I have it tweaked a little bit. It, uh, It looks like this. If you tweak his feature, it fits its features. It will add a little bit more texture to it. It's usually for sketching, and uh, in many cases, I usually uh, end up with uh, sketching and painting only with this brush. I don't change it at all. I just it's quite enough for me. So this phase, two phases uh, is uh, this is usually the process I use. Uh, I start with the default phase, uh, very simple. I don't add much details, and I just uh, proceed from there on. And making a different variance of uh, of this phase. How long does it take you to complete a sketch like that? These are quite fast, I mean, just a matter of minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, this brush uses a uh, tilt, tilt function of, of uh, Intel's uh, vacuum tablet. 
So it uh, so if you tilt your pen, you can create a very uh, wide line. At the same time, you can see. So using only this brush, you can sketch and paint at some point, I'll show you later, the characters from the very beginning to bring them to a full rendered state and ready for production. I'm not a huge fan of uh, changing brushes actually, I love to work with a uh, limited number. You really get a nice variation using that palette knife, though. I don't know that I've seen other artists use that for sketching before, so this is interesting. Well, it was an uh, accident uh, that I found it, actually. It was, uh, I was just checking all the brushes and uh, how they work and so on, and I just uh, ended up with this one that actually just does the job very well. <laughs> I like those uh, square brushes. Yeah. That's what it takes, yeah. though. You kind of have to experiment with a variety to find out what you like. And I find that most artists have, you know, a certain number of brushes that they rely on. Uh, well, in the constant art, uh, especially when you're working, uh, you know, with very tight deadlines, you don't have time to experiment much with, uh, with the tools. You have to have... Uh, no uh, good full toolbox of uh, really of those that uh, work the uh, do the job for you. So I prefer this one. Um, the the nice things uh, the nice thing with uh, this brush is that uh, you can uh, work with the line and at the same time uh, shade it. which uh, helps to shorten the drawing and painting uh, phase. Are you working on a PC or a Mac? On a PC. Okay. All right, and Ed is oh. asking... Mm -hmm. Sorry, you can go ahead <laughs> if you'd like. Oh, no. Go ahead. Do you use the art pen? Art pen? No. It's a default Intuos 3 graphic tablet. Default uh, pen that comes okay. with it. No fancy stuff at all. But uh, my other uh, tablet is uh, Vacom uh, Companion 2, which I used on the road, usually. Mm -hmm. So... But it's not much different from this one. I mean, I use just uh, the basic functions. As long as it has, uh, you know, the tilt function, I'm happy with it. Jamal is wondering, what was the, before you tweaked the brush, which, pet, was it just the standard palette knife? Yes, just a standard uh, loaded palette knife. Okay, loaded palette knife. The, the, only, the only thing I actually tweaked was the feature. But it's actually the very same brush. I'll probably put them on my website for download at some point if you're interested, so not a problem at all. Okay, that I don't great. keep my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we're starting with this face. We're making different variations and we are ending with, let's say, this one, which I like much, uh, most of all. From there, on, from there on, we'll proceed with the painting. It's a straightforward process. Uh, before uh, getting to put colors, I usually uh, change this uh, black color to some different, and I tint it. So this is how it looks before start painting. How it's done, quite simple go to effects, correct colors.
from there on, I usually choose uh, a red color, a little bit reddish, especially when you work on the face because uh, uh, it uh, gives you additional uh, shading, uh, this whole sketch. So, pushing a little bit further those uh, curves. You give him a little bit red tint. So you get rid of all the black colors because I don't like much uh, having a black when I'm painting. And we're going to the next step in which I start putting colors. Now for difference in Coral Painter we don't have clipping masks like uh, in uh, Photoshop. So this will work around. Uh, in which uh, I put uh, flat color under the sketch. The sketch is set to multiply, by the way. So I put in this uh, flat color underneath, so I can use it as a selection on the next phase when I start painting. Like this. With control and click on the layer, you're selecting the content. So, from there on, I usually using a very soft brush, which is uh, oil pastel. It's also default brush, which I tweaked a little bit. I don't know why I changed. I don't remember. It's uh, one of the oldest brushes I have, but uh, it's very soft. Oops. Let me show you a little bit. It blends very well. It uses it uses the texture. I'll explain the texture later. Very, very soft brush, especially when it's set uh, to uh, low opacity. You have really nice blending. So usually uh, the next step is uh, putting those uh, reddish colors and, uh, you know, uh, um, which are specific to the human face, you know, red on the skulls, on the nose, uh, around the eyes, a bit uh, of gray and uh, uh, greenish a little bit in, on the beard here, and a little bit of yellow on the forehead. These are just uh, I often change papers. And I work under the sketch the old way. Until I'm happy with the shading and uh, the colors, uh, then I proceed usually with uh, the painting on the top of the sketch. You can see a little bit of fixes here and there. Now you can see that uh, uh, the whole sketch is uh, all the shading I was doing while sketching uh, usually help me to proceed further with the painting. There you go. So at this point I usually go above the sketch, removing some of artifacts on the face and adding uh, additional uh, brush strokes and so on. Here you go. A little bit further. This is where I decided to make him a little bit older. So I added a bit, added a bit of uh, gray here. So this is the final variant of the face. I have uh, two white sources at this point. From here. And here. Uh, I, I use, uh, for, for shading, I use uh, soft brushes, but when I get to the 
uh, a refining process or rendering at, at the top when fixing stuff and so on, I usually start using exactly the same palette knife which I sketched before. And I add a little bit more uh, edgy strokes to make it a little bit uh, the face pop up out of the canvas. So this whole thing is actually done only with uh, two brushes, but you can do it with one if you want. If you can use even hundred if you were happy with it. <laughs> so this is it. Sketching phase. Tinted to your preferred color. Lay some cores underneath the sketch. And then paint it, paint over it. And you're getting this uh, effect, which uh, this technique I usually use uh, when uh, used when I uh, worked on uh, Assassin's Creed. It's very simple, and uh, uh, if you practice it enough, <laughs> you can work really, really fast with it. So. Now, once you have the character sketched, is that when they, they then take it and turn it into the 3D model? Um, no. Uh, no. Actually, I do a lot of uh, sketches. Let me show you. Um, you have to decide first, uh, you know, on the outfit, on different uh, uh, body type and so on. If you're working on the studio, usually a lot of information you're given by certain people who are responsible for this. Let's say you're working on a specific, uh, uh, you know, time period you already are given a lot of information, references, which you're working with. If you're working as a freelancer, it's your responsibility to gather all the references and stuff and do a lot of research on your own. It's a bit complicated when it gets to a time period or a visual style which differs from your own. So you have to... Uh, uh, how you say it, uh, we have to work fast and uh, accommodate to this visual style. Uh, these are faces done for uh, Assassin's Creed uh, Syndicate. At that time it was called uh, Assassin's Creed Victory, if, you're, uh, you know, if you know the game. So I was doing a lot of these faces just to find uh, the proper one for the main character. At that time the main character was named Edgar Fry, Edgar Fry. Uh, and the idea was that uh, he was joining you know, the Assassin's Creed Order when he's uh, still a kid, uh, grown up on the uh, streets of London and so on. So you follow his story from uh, his very early age to his uh, when he's grown up, he's a master assassin afterwards. But at some point, the guys uh, changed the, history, the story afterwards. Uh, some of the stuff were removed. This is uh, quite normal in the industry. So this was my proposal for the art director. For the main character of different faces, we're just uh, exploring, uh, throwing some hints on the screen just uh, to find the proper one. And uh, at the end, he was just he just said, uh, you know, do uh, do a sketch of a you know a guy who works who lives on the streets. He's a thief. He's uh, uh, poor uh, and so on. So I did this. This is the <laughs> very first sketch of Edgar Fry, and uh, the art director liked it very very much. So. We proceed from there on. It's a quick sketch. It's very important to work uh, fast and uh, it's understandable and your sketches are understandable not just by the art director 
but also from the designers, which is a very tough job, because uh, most of those guys uh, just don't can can't read uh, sketches very well. So we started with this, a little bit refined, same sketch in Painter. Uh, I usually use a lot of uh, pastel brushes. As you see, it's a different texture. The one of the greatest thing of the software is that you can create your own pap papers, which are actually different textures, like in uh, Photoshop, but uh, you don't uh, put them in the brush. Uh, you, you can use them on the fly with different brushes. So I have a lot of custom made uh, papers, which I use on different occasions. This one my favorites. Uh, the brush uh, I use here in uh, it's oil pastel. It's a low opacity, and uh, it's a grainy soft brush, which you can see that uh, texture. It's visible, but also very soft. If you want to make it pop pop up a little bit more, you can easily do this. Uh, There you go. By tweaking it here, you can change the contrast, brightness, the scale of the texture, and also the rotation. And uh, your brush, if you if you want to make it a little bit more uh, hard edged, you have to use a hard edged brush. You can do this quite easily in a brush creator. It's a Control B in the Windows. There you go. As you see, you have a lot of options to play with. Carlos is wondering if the paper that you had there is custom made. Mm -hmm. uh, this one it was uh, custom made by a friend of mine. We worked both on uh, in Ubisoft, so he gave it to me to make this one. Mm, okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I can share it, it's not a problem. I mean, you can use any texture you like and turn it into a paper. It's quite easy. Uh, let me just find... <laughs> and while you're doing that, Yogita is wondering, do you ever take a reference, I know you're using the reference panel, but do you ever place anything in a layer for perfecting a final subject? Uh, do you mean? I think what she's meaning is, you know, physically taking a character that um, kind of like working from a reference photo. No, usually I use reference photos exactly for uh, just uh, different uh, elements from the of the character. Okay. Uh, let's say the posture and so on. I'm trying to uh, to draw it from imagination and so on. Mm -hmm. I just have quite enough experience with doing this, so I hardly go into reference references, uh, you know, of human posture or characters and so on. I just use different uh, elements. Let's say this helmet or outfit or weapons and so on just to make sure that I keep with, uh, within the time period uh, necessary for, let's say, this project. Okay, thank you. Okay, oh, you're welcome. So, uh, you can uh, put any texture within Color Painter, just a JPEG file or whatever. Just a second. Use a selection box, choose the preferred uh, part of the texture you want to make to into a paper. Uh, 
and here you go to capture paper. You can pull this crossfade slider to the max, so it will remove all the borders afterwards. And there you go. Now we have a custom paper. So the brush I'm using, it uses exactly that. This capture texture, which I can use on anything. I mean, you can uh, use it for creating some rocks or even metal, just giving a different texture. And of course, you can tweak it from uh, the panel here. I have an interesting so, question just about um, a job working in a studio. Let's say it was Ubisoft. Do they mm -hmm. have designers there that are specialized on certain things? For instance, environments or characters. Would you have to create all of those or would you typically specialize in one thing? Uh, I see. Okay, good question. Uh, it it uh, differs from uh, studio to studio. If uh, we have a small studio, like here in Bulgaria, uh, we usually, um, sometimes we have to do a lot of uh, different things, not just the characters, uh, we do, do environments or storyboards or even help uh, with the textures or uh, uh, user interface at the end and so on. So because we just uh, have small number of people, but in the big studios like uh, Montreal, US of Montreal, they have uh, guys for almost every task. I mean, there is one guy working on the characters, uh, the other guy is working on the environments, they have a storyboarder, uh, illustrator who are making marketing materials, and so on. So it's, it's a bit easier. It all depends on the studio. Okay, very interesting, thank you. So my technique is usually building it up from a sketch and uh, refining it a little bit more and uh, to the point where I start adding colors to a black and white sketch. It's a process that was explained uh, by the fellow artist uh, Dominic Saponaro in the previous uh, webinar. It's called glazing. You just uh, Let's say this uh, black and white sketch, you make a new layer, you can switch it uh, from to multiply or overlay or color, depends on the effect you're looking for, and you just uh, start coloring. Found this a little bit too much, but there you go. adding a little bit of color to a dull black and white sketch. I don't like using a color uh, palette. I usually use this uh, color wheel all the time. I just find it a little bit faster. In, a little bit helps to understand the colors, how they work. How did you learn how to work with color? I know Dominic pointed out a website to go to to kind of help out with selecting a color scheme. Uh, well, I'm not good with the colors, that's the truth. <laughs> uh, I prefer working in a black and white, uh, only be no, not because it's uh, super fast for me, and because uh, I'm a huge fan of, uh, um, let's say, Adrian Smith, if uh, the people are aware of him. He's a great illustrator. He works a lot uh, on the Warhammer games. Uh, so the guy is working a lot in, uh, in the black and white. He does awesome illustrations. So when it comes to a color, is a you know 
the moment when uh, it's a bit annoying for me. I just love my black and white characters a little bit more. <laughs> but learning about the color is so from experience, from practice. Uh, there's a lot of information on the uh, internet. You just have to look for it and start practicing. So this is usually the way I lay color on a black and white sketch. So once you're happy with it, I concentrate mostly on the design of the character. I mean, uh, the outfit, uh, uh, the face and so on. So uh, I prefer doing it in black and white because it's faster. And uh, at a uh, later point, you can, uh, uh, you can experiment with uh, different colors without uh, you know, uh, screwing the uh, sketch. All right? So this is uh, colored and painted over sketch. From there, I continue with adding a little bit uh, more texture. Here we changed a little bit the height of the character, put this knife in his hand. So he's already not a nine-year-old, but uh, probably uh, 18. He has a beard. <laughs> and he has a little bit more work on his outfit. I'll show you the final variation, which uh, was uh, uh, I mean final final when it went uh, for modeling. So this is it. Now, did you hand like paint that scarf or did you use any kind of texture reference? Uh, I used a reference for the scarf, just to, for how it looks, but uh, it's, it's all hand-painted, mm -hmm. I mean, all of it. So, these uh, lines here, here and so on, this is all done uh, with different layers, uh, set on overlay or uh, color and so on. It's, it's simple. It's very simple. Now, something to know uh, when uh, creating a game character, uh, no matter if it's in a game studio or your freelancer. Uh, it's uh, especially if uh, the character or of the game is third-person uh, game, in which uh, most of the time you're looking on the back of the character. You have to make really interesting backside of this character, so mm, it keeps the interest of the player keeping <laughs> playing the game. Uh, so we have to do this, uh, you know front and back of the character. Uh, the art director was happy with it, so it went for production from there on. At uh, this point, I have no more job on this, uh, this one, so I continue with the next. Uh, so you focus was, uh, on the, the illustration yeah. aspect and not the animation. We had a question, just no, wondering. No. Uh, no animation, no anything. I just concentrate on uh, designing the character, how it will look in the game, uh, from face, from uh, posture and uh, clothes and so on. So at the same time, it will keep uh, with uh, the Assassin's Creed uh, uh, brand. I mean, you can see this. Uh, uh, waste, uh, how it's called, uh, sorry. <laughs> I, I just don't, don't remember the name, I was just, uh, oh, I was subtract. Uh, how do you call this uh, red around the waist? Um, it's not a belt, but... Uh, I don't know. Does what anybody know? Let us know. <laughs> um, he's saying scarf. I just no. lost it. Um, someone will figure it out. Okay. So we have to keep with this, uh, you know, uh, Assassin's Creed uh, elements. So this thing around the waist. Oh, you mean the, the, just the scarf? Yes, the scarf around okay. the, the waist. Jamal. Exactly. Thank you. Cool. <laughs> Okay. Thank Jamal, you. <laughs> uh, also, 
uh, let me change, change that color a little bit. This here, oh, what I'm using. Jeez. Let's go with the, okay. This here, elements, which are uh, from the Assassin's Creed, so the scarf and the hat. It usually don't look like this, but uh, the art director asked to make it look a little bit like uh, Assassin's Creed uh, hood, you know. So we make it a little bit more angled, like this one. As you, if you remember, Assassin's Creed hood looks like something like this. So this element is very popular for the game. So there it is. So this is the point when uh, this character is going for modeling and producing. I don't have any more job on this one, so I continue with next. I'll show you some of the other. Uh, this was interesting. I don't know if it's in the game or it's uh, left out, I'm not sure. Here is uh, creating different uh, uh, poses for it. It's called Silas. So this guy is a more of a brawler. Uh, he's a tough guy. He's a part of the Assassin's Creed order. And I had to imagine it in some way, so keeping with uh, different, uh, you know, the clothing and so on from the time period. So I created this one, uh, this sheet. So uh, the art director is asked to asked me to make him look a little bit like uh, Rooney, the soccer player. I'm not much into soccer, so forgive me if I'm wrong, but I'm not sure if you're going to recognize him. So this is the end, uh, the final version of the character. Uh, you can see I uh, did also uh, backside of the of him, so it will have enough information for the three D modeler. At the end, you can work with uh, different materials, uh, leather, as you can see here, take, uh, fabric, and so on, uh, metal here, and uh, this is uh, I don't know uh, if you guys have any questions uh, about uh, you know what I'm doing actually, ask me. It will be a lot easier. Um, uh, you know, you have answered all the questions that have come in so far, which means typically that you're covering the subject <laughs> very well. <laughs> now, I have a question that is unrelated yeah. to your process, but what are they using to do the 3D modeling? Uh, in the studio, mm -hmm. in Ubisoft. Mm -hmm. uh, they're working in 3D Max and uh, ZBrush. Okay. Usually blocking it, uh, making wall poly in Z, uh, 3D Max and ZBrush is for sculpting and high poly. Most of the, of the software the most people use actually for 3D modeling. Yeah. Okay. So I was going to show you something. I just found this sketch laying around from I don't know how long, probably years these days and I was about to show you how I sometimes proceed with creating a character from crappy old sketch. So this was just some brush test I just throw around. Probably I installed a new version of Painter so I was checking if my brushes work. So I just did that, saved it for some reason. I didn't delete it for a lot of time for years and just throw it away. So a few days before this webinar, I was uh, I just found it and I thought, oh well, why why not just do something out of it? And I started overpainting. Actually it took me probably an hour and a half to finish it. I was probably in the mood. <laughs> so I'll show you different stages of it. So this is the original sketch. It's crappy all the way. 
I was about to create some, I was thinking some character along the lines of uh, Destiny game, so a little bit futuristic, and uh, this time a female, because I draw a lot of uh, male characters and uh, not enough uh, female characters, which is a mistake on my side, I should change a little bit the subject. This is the same brush I use, uh, palette knife. So I just start building on top of the old sketch, adding stuff. As you see, I'm not working on the whole uh, character, I mean on the whole pose. I just work uh, just, just a bit uh, under the waist. So I can concentrate on the face, on just different, ele different elements on the body and so on. I remove stuff, I add some on the outfit, the weapon. I don't think much about uh, the weapon design at this time, because the character will have a weapon, of course. I just concentrate on the character itself, because there are people who uh, work especially on the weapon designs and so on, so this is not my concern so far. No fancy uh, layers here, or default layer, just adding on the top of the old one. Dwayne is yes, wondering, see, quite, oh, I'm yes. sorry, um, how yes. long does it typically take you to, from start to finish, to complete a character? Uh, it's different every time. I mean, uh, if I'm in the mood, if I like a few... Uh, uh, you know, the character and uh, uh, the projects is something I really like and so on. It could be really fast, but if it's uh, some boring stuff and uh, I don't like it much and so on, it will take a little bit more. But this one, it's just in black and white. It's not colored. I'll show you the final version when you get there. It took me about uh, probably two hours, but I was just in a mood to do it. <laughs> But two hours is perfect. I mean, it's okay. It's perfect if you can do a character that they have enough information for a 3D modeler. If I have enough information for uh, designers and uh, art director, so two hours is perfect. You can do three or four in on a day, in a day. But of course, uh, this uh, could be really overwhelming at some point. So here we go. We have, uh, I have a nice uh, silhouette of the character. Uh, this is the point where I usually uh, resize it. So I can uh, draw the legs and uh, all the rest of it. Let me close this. So here it is, resized. So I can continue with, I don't resize uh, the canvas, but uh, the painting itself. It's, I, I use uh, like uh, A3 uh, size painting um, canvas, A3 portrait, this is like a preset I have saved here, usually work on this one. So from there on, I start drawing the legs, there's a lot of proportion issues here but uh, I'm usually fixing it on the fly while working on the, on, uh, on the character. Start adding additional stuff, uh, imagining the armor and so on. Here is have the head a bit, a bit resized to match the body. Oops. Uh, I was thinking of making a female version of uh, one of my other uh, paintings. Let me just find it really quick. This one. Maybe some of the guys have seen it before. It was also very inspired by uh, Destiny game. I was playing it at uh, that point, so I was really, really inspired by it. So I was thinking about making a female version of, uh, let's say, the same character. So 
so I, the, the, the best thing working digitally is that uh, you can uh, just pop another layer, do a lot of fixes uh, on the way and just don't worry about uh, doing something wrong because you can fix it. It's not a problem at all. Here I'm adding a lot of uh, additional elements here on the armor, the glasses and so on. The weapon, I have something in mind like a bullpup rifle. Uh, at this point I'm thinking more about so that this character is like uh, recon, uh, a quick stealthy character, not a uh, tank, I mean like uh, heavy armored, you know, big weapon waving character. And it has a little bit more finesse in it. So. Same way I continue on and on. Here it is. This is uh, like some, some some kind of a probe or something uh, that can be thrown and can uh, you know show you the area and so on. It can scan the area, show you the enemies, like a personal personal drone or something. Final fixes. At this point, I find it already finished just making very, very small corrections, putting her left leg and arm a little bit in the background, make the closest part a little bit pop up, small corrections, choose the size of the face, defining some elements here on the gun, And that's it. This is the final version of a character, done in two hours uh, without using any references, uh, only from imagination. Of course, uh, if you guys are working, uh, if you're beginners, whoops, something happened. Uh oh. What Probably happened? too much, too much layers and switching front and front and back, and it just crashed. I'll just, it's uh, still on the screen there. We can still see it. It's on the screen? Yeah, yeah. but it froze. Okay. <laughs> Actually, it happens for the first time. I haven't had a problem with uh, Painter uh, since uh, Painter 11. So it's probably because I have a lot of stuff going background. And the GoTo yeah. webinar sometimes messes with mm -hmm. things. So. Yeah, I just. Uh, it usually happens when I am streaming also, but. Uh, well, while you're trying to hold, get it hold up, on there. okay, no problem. Mm -hmm. um, there was one more question, just about in a production environment. I know you said it takes about a couple hours to create a concept character. Is that pretty typical for the amount of time that they would allow you? Uh, it all depends uh, on the studio where you're working on. Uh, okay. Some, some, you know, and on. The in the project also, because uh, there are different uh, deadlines. So some of them you have to create a character uh, finished in, in a day or a few hours and just send it and have to be approved and so on. Uh, sometimes it, um, you, can, it, you can work on it uh, like a whole week. It, it differs from a project to project. And uh, of course, uh, it's, uh, it depends on the artist also. I prefer working uh, very fast and, uh, you know. Do you usually play the games once they're produced? I would imagine you'd be very curious to see how your characters come to life. <laughs> Uh, actually, the process sometimes is uh, so uh, overwhelming that at some point I, I just don't want to see the game at the end. <laughs> I just let the other people uh, play it and uh, tell me their, you know, experience. <laughs> well, the, the, they're like uh, Assassin's Creed Rogue and the Liberation uh, before that for Vita and uh, PS3, uh, Black Flag 
the project, the syndicate. Actually, the syndicate I haven't played yet. The rogue I have, uh, the liberation also, but uh, it was like uh, two years after the release. I just mm -hmm. didn't want to see anything from this game anymore. I was so exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. So this is the final version, okay? That uh, it's done two hours. It has enough uh, information to give to your client or our director. So also you can make a lot of uh, quick uh, fixes uh, here and there if uh, asked. And uh, it's uh, just one brush, no fancy layers, and so on. I usually, when I uh, make like uh, 10 layers or something like this, I usually uh, flat the image and uh, I resave it as another, uh, as another file and continue from there on, just to make sure that uh, I have a backup of the work and also uh, make sure that uh, it doesn't grow too much in the size. Mm, okay. Uh, we have one more okay. question from Ed. And as you were showing us, you know, the process of this character turning the layers on and off, um, he noticed that the arm position was changing and is wondering, was there any particular composition method that you use to make those adjustments or is it just... Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, uh, at some point uh, her uh, left arm, uh, her left hand was too big and uh, her right right uh, arm was a little bit too long, so I usually use uh, just... Uh, you eyeball it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, if, if I feel that something is wrong, I usually go and correct it to some, po to some point. It's just a matter of uh, eyeballing it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, I usually pick the part of the image which I feel like it's wrong or something. And you've also showed us the Control the front. C. Oh, okay. Based. The front and mm -hmm. the back poses we've seen so a this lot. Is how usually. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a delay going on. Um, Leonardo is wondering do they also ask for T pose? Top side? No. no, no, so sometimes they may ask for, for uh, to do the, like say uh, a side view of the f uh, head or uh, some elements that uh, are not quite visible in the concept so there will be more clear information for uh, the modeler. Uh, you can do it uh, the way you prefer, either doing another concept which is uh, just overkill on your side, so, or uh, just uh, draw uh, this uh, element uh, somewhere around the character. If you have to do this bags here, you just can draw it quite fast. For some reason, I think the screen is still frozen. I'm not sure. I'm still seeing. Oh. Yeah, Wait. I didn't notice the application close and open back up, but, um, oh, oh, okay, there we go. Yeah, now okay. I can see it. Probably because uh, after I start the webinar, I have switched to default view, and we're keeping the old one. So you can uh, just uh, draw some of the elements around the character, giving more information for the 3D modeler. Uh, if they want more information on the back, uh, I, what I do usually is taking this character, uh, copy, making an additional copy, uh, um, flip it horizontal, and uh, paint it. Painting it is back. I mean, as you see it, I'll show you. It will be much easier. What I do is uh, getting this character like this, flip it horizontal, uh, 
and paint over it. Just imagine that this is her back. So you're from there on you are painting her back. <laughs> Well, I, I have comments in the questions mm -hmm. panel just saying this was a wonderful overview of your workflow and your thought process. So everybody really appreciated this. It was good for thank me you. too. Thank you, <laughs> I, thank I you learned guys. A lot. You were amazing. Um, thank you guys. Thank you for attending uh, my webinar. I promise that uh, I'll put uh, more tutorials and more video streams and so on in the future on my YouTube channel and also the Twitch. Uh, if you don't follow me on the Facebook, please do. I usually put a lot of information there when I'm streaming or I have a tutorial released or uh, have another webinar probably in the future. So yeah, just keep up and if you have any questions, any just ask me, don't hesitate, because mo a lot of people are just too scared, like, oh, I'm just scared, I don't want to uh, trouble you and so on. You're not troubling me. If you have question, ask away. I'll be more than happy to answer and help in any way.